Welcome to day four, part four of my Linux gaming series, where I'm experimenting with running Linux on my gaming PC, which has an 8700K and a GTX 1080 Ti. And in this episode, we're primarily going to focus on native Linux games and what that experience is like and some side things that I want to run. However, I'm also going to combine this with what was originally going to be a breakout episode where I try out some of the suggestions and little tweaks that you all had mentioned in terms of fixing some of the issues that I had. We're going to start with installing Python to see if that fixes my Doom issue. Uh, Unfull screening games, forcing games to run in, or Doom specifically to run in OpenGL before switching it over to Vulkan. And what was the other? I, I switched my my Logitech G502 to 500 hertz polling mode, in mode instead of 1000. Uh, that was supposedly a potential fix for my mouse issues that I was having. And then some people also suggested a, a Librat bag and Piper software for managing my gaming mouse on Linux. It's a little more complicated than I wanted to deal with in terms of setting it up, but I will have a link to it in the description down below. It was far faster and easier for me to just set it up on Windows and then boot back into Linux. So I have it set to 500 hertz instead of 1000 hertz. And then we're going to play some native Linux games. So let's jump in. So let's get a couple desktop things out of the way first. First, since I am using Ubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, it has their own software boutique. However, if you want to install more software from the original Ubuntu Software Center, you can choose that here where it says install one of the software centers. There's only two available. There should be more. I don't know why there isn't. You don't really need to deal with Synaptic Package Manager since that's the APT command, but you can install the actual Ubuntu Software Center. I find it very annoying when these aren't installed by default. And in terms of installing software, I showed how to install a few things via the .deb or Debian, uh, package files because that was the direct translation to going onto the internet and downloading Windows software and, one, and I wanted people to be able to get up and running as quickly as possible. Clearly that upsets some people so I'm going to show you here in the Ubuntu Software Center you can usually install a lot of the software you're looking for. Here's OBS which I already installed via the Software Center anyway but do keep in mind this will be a separate OBS install. I already have OBS open. This would be, I believe, the Snap version? I could, yeah. It's the Snap version, which is kind of isolated from other software. In here, you also have Discord. Apparently, Chrome is in the Software Center now. It's not. Oh, there it is, yeah. Um, but you can see, even though I installed via the package manager, or via the actual package, it's in the Software Center. So when I run the updates, it will still update Chrome. And Discord itself, I believe, still updates itself. Oh, I didn't mean to close that. All right, so I've set my mouse to 500 hertz pulling rate instead of 1000. And then I went into the Steam settings and I actually turned, I showed you that I am not running the beta of Proton, despite the fact that I showed me switching between it. I am trying the stable version as well. And then I switched Steam to say, to use this tool instead of existing compatibility tools for specific games which theoretically should not affect anything because if another game has specific compatibility tools to run on Linux, it should already be running that way. Like that should be something that it was already put together well. So we're going to test with Killing Floor 2 here and see if my mouse issues are fixed since I knew that game worked relatively well. And then we'll go back to testing other games. All right, let's get in a match here. And like I said, I just real quick want to test my mouse. It feels a little better. The game's still running kind of stuttery a little bit, you know, not perfect. The mouse feels a little better, but it still feels like there's mouse acceleration on it, which is not turned on in the game. But sometimes it, it just doesn't feel super consistent, but it certainly feels a little better. All right, one suggestion to get controllers working is to install a package called Steam Devices. So uh, we're going to do that here. Steam Devices is already installed. Another suggestion was that I checked too many boxes with controllers, even though I was doing them one at a time as I was testing. Apparently the only the top one is supposed to work.
Well, that's interesting. It actually detected when I pressed the controller in. It recognizes that there's a controller and big picture mode should enable. I have honestly done absolutely nothing to make this happen. I should... I, okay. Okay, it did not get detected by the game, though. It's being detected by the OS, or by Steam, because when I press the button, it focused Steam, and then when I press the home button again, it launched Steam Big Picture Mode. I can access the Steam community while playing here. It's a little flickery with NDI, but that's okay. Like, Steam recognizes the controller this time, which is certainly progress. Maybe Steam just needed restarted to recognize controller. The game does not appear to be. So I'm gonna wrap that up as an oh 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 lord. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap that up as an issue with this game or with the Proton package for this game. But Steam is now recognizing an Xbox One controller, so whatever issue I was having is not normal. And I had mixed comments between, "LOL, why would you expect the controller to work out of the box? You have to manually set up drivers and." No, there's nothing else you need to do because the drivers are built into the kernel, which is what I assumed. So, it's always funny seeing the contradicting arguments being made at the exact same moment. There's a few specific recommendations from the actual Steam forums regarding controllers. I will have a link to uh, that thread and the suggestions in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself, if you want to do any additional tweaking. So, I'm installing Doom now, or downloading it. It's going to take a little bit, and... I will try a couple fixes that you all have suggested in the comments. In terms of native Linux gaming, uh, there, you have a few options. Starting with Steam, in your actual library, you now have a tab if you're on Linux for SteamOS plus Linux games. You can see over a thousand of my games are actually on that list. Oh, I see. When you tell it to use Proton, for, oh yeah, that's literally all of my games, 1049. Okay, when you tell it to use Proton, that list populates with all of your games because then all of them are running with Steam Play. But if you have Proton disabled, you can see specific ones. But otherwise, you can see next to where it says install or play and some description about the game, you will see a block that says you're playing with Steam Play. That means it's Windows compatibility. Otherwise, it's a native setup. I'm going through my games that I might want to play that have native Linux ports. Uh, Amnesia The Dark Descent. Don't really feel like playing that, but it is a native Linux game. A lot of indie games are going to be, like Arkshot. Uh, Arma 2 DayZ is not. Neither are the Assassin's Creed games. Here we go. Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition is a native Linux, Linux Steam game. We're going to install that one. So just go through your list and see what you have. I'm trying Dusk again here, since that was one that I definitely experienced the mouse issues in, and we're going to see if it's any better. Alright, this is not any better. It's still kind of moving and floating on its own for some reason. It's really bad. So it's not a 1000 Hz issue, at least for this kind of game. I'm going to disable 144 Hz and go back to 60 Hz and see if that helps. Nope. 144 hertz going back to 60 hertz does not help. It's still just as bad, if not worse. All right, that's an annoyance. The original Killing Floor is a has a native Linux entry in Steam, but Killing Floor 2 is Steam Play. Come on. I just lost an entire hour worth of footage. I recorded as MKV and I remuxed to MP4 and I didn't think to check the file before deleting the MKV. And the MP4 is corrupt for some reason, I can't get it to work at all, and there doesn't seem to be a trace of the MKV file on my file system. Even with a file recovery tool, recycle bin, nothing. I am pissed. This was an entire hour worth of work, so we're gonna just kind of run through some games that do or do not work following the changes that I've made, which include installing LLVM. Python was already installed, and then switch changing the Steam setting so that it says use Steam Play instead of the game's optimizations. So we're going to start with Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. This is a native game. This game runs at 30 FPS, but otherwise seems to be solid and stable and everything rendering correctly. Pretty cool. It even had the cutscenes working. You're seeing a little bit of flicker here that's caused by the screen capture. I'm really not sure why, but that is not present on my monitor, and otherwise it seems to run great other than the 30 FPS cap. 
All right, Beat Hazard is a wonderful shoot 'em up game that can cause epileptic seizures if you're not careful due to how flashy everything is. When I first tested this in my initial recording, the controller worked great. Now suddenly it's not. Uh, start a. Once again, Steam recognizes it, but it's completely inconsistent whether or not the game actually deals with it, which is incredibly frustrating. Especially since I already had it recording is working. Yeah, like I hit A to skip the menu and tell it to use a controller, but then it doesn't recognize the controller anymore. Controller configure. It, 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 it recognizes it. I don't understand. Whatever, the game runs. Call of Duty World at War I wanted to highlight. It, this is a Steam Play game, but another Call of Duty that actually runs really well. At 1440p, everything maxed out. I can maintain the solid 90 FPS cap that the game itself runs at. And it's amazing. This is 100% on parity, on par with my Windows experience, which is really neat. As you can see, max settings, 90 to 91 FPS, which is the cap for the game. No stutter, no hitches. This is full Proton emulating it. Compatibility layer, what have you, it's running great. We have taken the lead. Got a recon plane! Our recon plane will find them! Wherever they hide! I'm trying to get a vanilla server set up for World of War because as much as I love going back to the game, all these servers are like modded and have 32 players and all sorts of shenanigans that doesn't represent a vanilla experience. So if you'd be interested in such a server, do let me know. The original Borderlands does not have a Linux native copy, but Borderlands 2 does for some reason. Be warned, it has completely unskippable intro cutscenes that make me want to uninstall the game immediately. Now, when I was first playing this, the cutscenes themselves seemed to be running at a slowed speed and would only hit 30 FPS. However, anything rendered in the game engine seems to run almost 200 FPS. Mouse is still really sensitive. That's something else someone else had given a comment about regarding Overwatch on their computer. Linux versus Windows. Linux seemed way more sensitive. I almost wonder if there's an OS level uh, mouse acceleration built in. But otherwise, even with all this snow particle and stuff, it's not jittery or anything like that. Seems to run fine. Call of Duty, the original Black Ops, on the other hand, still just attempts to launch and then crashes to the desktop with nothing ever popping up. Counter-Strike Go is crashing to the desktop after it hits a black screen, which is bizarre because I already have footage of it running as since all Valve games are native Linux now, it ran really well at like 300 FPS, but for some reason... Something I've done trying to fix other games has made this not one to run, which is really annoying. But on my last test, it was running full speed. Unlike Dirt 3, which had all those crazy geometry issues, Dirt Showdown does have a native Linux version. Now, it's another game that makes you wait forever to actually get into gameplay, which is my least favorite part of recent game trends. And again, apologies if I seem rushed through this. I had a completely natural recording of all this that got totally botched. Really frustrated. I just want to play a game. All right, and this worked with my controller right out of the box. I didn't even have to mess with it. Suddenly controller working, running at a sm <laughs> perfectly smooth 144 hertz lock, 144 FPS, no jitter, no frame dropping, no tearing, and controller support works out of the box. The experience is so inconsistent, it's mind blowing. This is running amazingly. Rocket League also has a native Linux port, which is great, except for in my last test, it did not detect the controller whatsoever. Maybe it will this time. It's not letting me skip the intros. Yeah, no, it's not detecting the controller at all. It's rendering the game. That's a good test with Rocket League, is the menu is actually a game renderer, so you get to see. But there's no 
controller input at all. So if I go to training, maybe it'll let me control it with the controller. Nope. Literally nothing at all. I don't understand. Game Fortress 2, another Valve game, Source Engine, running on Linux natively. And we're in the game. Mouse is a little oversensitive, don't feel like lowering it, getting tired of going into those menus. So we're running 160 FPS right now. Little jitters when it's trying to load stuff every once in a while, but... It's working. It's working really good. Really well. Works for me. Now, in terms of other native Linux games, some are just available from the publisher or developer directly. And some of them, if you want the, like, cliche bad first impression with Linux gaming, then you can actually go to your software center and go to games. And there's a lot of little indie games and little mini games that would normally be built into your operating system on, like, a Windows. Uh, however... A lot of these are really old, and some of them have been built into the, or, you know, software centers for the longest time. However, you can get the Dolphin emulator from here. Super Tux Card is a classic. It's always been built in. Uh, somewhere down here, Chromium BSU is a little Space, or space Invaders shoot 'em up game right here. But none of these are really, like, AAA titles. There is Quake 2. That's interesting. We're going to install Quake 2. Now, for me, a game that I play is Old School RuneScape. And for that, I use a third-party client called OS Buddy or RS Buddy. Now, they actually make this available in a few different forms. You have the Windows executable. You have a Mac OS copy. You have it in the Arch user repository. And they, imp they provide a Debian package. Or you could just download the raw .jar file. Now, I have installed the Debian package, which... A lot of people like to say, oh, I'm using Linux like Windows, but that's how a lot of people want to use it. And if it's available, there's no reason not to unless, you know, it's easier to install the software somewhere else. I mean, there are reasons, but for this case, when I'm installing software that aren't in the repositories, there's no reason not to. And I installed it this way. However, in order to actually get it to open, you need the Oracle Java and not the open source Java implementation that's built in. So over here on the launch pad, uh, it has the PPA, or the repository, that you need to add in order to install Orica Java 8 Installer. I said Orica? Oracle? And if you since I only showed the command line before, if you want to see how to insta install a repository without using the command line, though keep in mind, to install this software, you'll still need to use the command line. Uh, go to Software and Updates. And also, if you are if you feel like you're searching for software in the software center that should be there, that other people are saying are there, but you can't find it, make sure these checkboxes are checked. You can get proprietary software and some extra stuff that might be missing. But if you go to other software, then you can click add and just paste that line in there, hit OK, and then it will ask you to refresh, which is the equivalent of sudo apt update, and then you can install the software. Unfortunately, Oracle Java 8 installer only comes from the command line, or... You could install Synaptic Package Manager, but eh. And now, I can go to my favorites and open OS Buddy, because it's Java-based and it did not work with the OpenJDK. And now I'm running full fat, the full 1080p render of old school RuneScape at the max 60, well 50 FPS. <laughs> it only goes up to 50 FPS since it's European. And we're ready to go. Ready to play. It looks great. Runs great. Don't have any real complaints about it. Pretty awesome. This is a game I waste a lot, a lot of time in. Okay, so there's two fixes that were recommended for Doom, and one of them already worked for me, which I'll show you in just a second. But if that doesn't work for you, right-click Doom, go to Properties, go to Set Launch Options, and type in plus R underscore render API space 1. And for your launch options, which will force it to run in Vulkan mode and fix the black screen issue. However, I did not need to do this, so I'm going to hit cancel. And the issue for me was it was running in full screen and the game was still rendering, but in full screen it was giving me a black screen at first. And just hitting Alt-Enter to run it in windowed mode, or I guess you could add 
the dash windowed flag to the launch options actually made it work for me. And it runs decent. We'll see here in a sec. Okay, as you can see here, getting the black screen, running full screen, there might have been a flicker of the intro text, but just hitting Alt-Enter brings it back to windowed mode. You can now see we have the uh, st statistics overlay, and I just put it back into full screen on accident. It gets a little freezy when it's first trying to load. There we go, windowed mode. We are in OpenGL mode by default, which is the problem, but it, we do get usage statistics as well as... Addressing the driver that I have installed that everyone keeps saying is out of date and to install 396.54 Gee, I wonder what driver is installed Unfortunately, you can't access uh, Settings until you go to gameplay then video actually advanced change OpenGL to Vulcan Hit back It will relaunch in Vulcan mode and you will be mostly good to go Now the menus are running at a nice smooth 60 FPS. My save file keeps getting corrupted every time I download this game. That's really frustrating. I'm guessing the Windows save files do not transfer. So we're just going to do arcade mode, load up a level here just to get into the game. Get in the game. EA Sports. It's in the game. Now it's running at like 200 frames per second at 1080p on very low, which is... Probably something you might expect from my GTX 1080. However, for me, it's a, it's a little jittery. The input feedback is a little weird. I've been told this could be related to my desktop compositor choice, but I have switched from Marco to Compiz, and it's still I still have these issues. But again, it runs great. This only has to do with, like, the window capturing the mouse and stuff, which I've towed is fixable through some craziness, or potentially just running another distribution will help this issue, which we might explore in a future episode. Yeah. So you, you get the picture by now in terms of inconsistency of the controllers, and, you know, native Linux games are definitely the way to go in this setup. Let's try out Quake 2 real quick just to have tried it. Required data files are missing. Okay, well, running that command made it work. Uh, mouse controls are bonkers as hell. I'm trying to use WASD and it is not responding to WASD. Oh, it's it's using the controller. Whoa. That's not what I would want, but all I'd have to do is unplug the controller. Although it's not shooting with the controller. Either way, you get the idea. There's a port. It's running really smoothly. Just little issues. All right, I'm wrapping it up for this episode of Gaming on Linux. In this episode, we covered some tweaks that you all suggested, and please scroll through the comments on the previous episodes. There's some tips and things like that that I didn't necessarily feature or that I couldn't get working and so on. Pseudo final conclusion time following the Steam Play episode, Lutris, and now Native Games. I, I feel like this series kind of gave the wrong impression, and part of that is my fault for how I talked about things in the first place because I, the goal with this series was to show while I am experienced with Linux I've been using Linux since the 90s it was to show what someone who is jumping in trying to use it for gaming would encounter because after the Steam Play on Linux announcement there were so many of the evan evangelists jumping out there saying there's no excuse not to you or no excuse to be using Windows now it's so easy and then you jump in and things are still very hit or miss, and then there's a lot of people getting annoyed with me for not trying, like, more advanced configuration things when your average gamer wanting to jump in isn't going to know about those or how to use them, and they're very rarely documented. And most people's fixes fixes were either contradicting with each other or with what I already did. That's Linux on YouTube for you. <laughs> but 
again, the point wasn't to be negative. It was to show what, uh, I mean, a realistic situation, because I feel like people idealize how far Linux has come a little too much. It was supposed to be a realistic approach, but I did not, you know, the goal wasn't to be super negative. The goal was to show just how far we've come. Just like five or so years ago, none of this was possible. Hardly any games that were major releases ran on Linux at all through any sort of emulation. Some of the play, or what, what was it? Was it Play on Linux? Got some stuff working, and like you can get Adobe Photoshop working. If you use an older version, if you use a new version, it'll open, but you won't get any usable performance out of it. But we're having a lot of developments happening, rap, happening rapidly here. And while my goal would be for all games to be released natively with Vulkan support and Linux support or OpenGL support, that you don't need the translation or the advanced configuration and things run a little bit smoother because the games that have native ports, for the most part, work really, really well. But I do foresee Proton being a good band-aid in the short term in terms of, you know, getting more games and thus a larger player base for Steam and Valve to report to developers to encourage them to deve develop natively for it. And I see that being awesome. But there's so many little finicky details like controllers working or not working half of the time, my mouse issues I'm still having even at 500 hertz pulling rate, 144 hertz, which is, you know, what I would be migrating from, isn't necessarily working all that amazingly. Just uh, little advanced things that you have to install that nothing tells you you need installed but might actually fix everything for you. Uh, apparently Proton Tricks, which I wasn't going to mess with, uh, can improve some of the Proton game compatibility. Like, there's a lot of little things that would add up for an average user or a newcomer to not want to mess with it. Whereas, for the tinkerers, they're like, yeah, why didn't you do that, dummy? But, I'm excited. This is a lot of progress. I've played games on Linux in, that I'd never thought I'd get to play, and some that ran so much better than I ever thought they would. Like, World of War was on par with what I was just playing on Windows. That was freaking cool. Now, that's an older DirectX 9 game, I believe. Very older game, but the fact that it's running there and it was a AAA release is pretty awesome. If you want to chat about this subject, come check out. We have a Linux chat room in my Discord server at epulsevox.com slash Discord. I am not sponsored by them. They sent me a shirt for trying to make a tutorial submission for them. Uh, go check that out and check out the earlier episodes if you haven't already. If you want to hear more of my thoughts as well as Windows from level 1 tech slash level 1 Linux thoughts. Uh, I have a full conversation with him up. You can check that link in the description below. Come over to my gaming channel if you want to see gameplay videos. And otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.